Hello and welcome to my next video collection video. Um, I'm going to do the Eureka as requested by Horror Fan Man. Unfortunately, because of the way I've got this set up, if I do it in situ, I tend to get a bit of glare on it. So I shall try and figure out a way of doing this. Well, you can actually see the covers and it's not all glary. And first up is Fritz Lang's Metropolis. This is number eight, the Masters of Cinema series on DVD. This is a lovely package. Two disc set. With great booklet all about the making of the film this the granddaddy of sci-fi really uh, a very very good film slow in places um, but all in all the one that any sort of cineast really should watch Look at that original poster artwork, that is fantastic. And uh, Maria's robot became inspiration for a certain C3PO. <laughs> Made in 1927, it's the 118-minute version. There is now a longer version because some 16 mil print was found in Argentina, I believe, and we'll know more about that coming up. Uh, number nine, another Fritz Lang film, Spion, aka Spies. Uh, and whereas Metropolis was the granddaddy of sci fi fiction, this is a granddaddy of spy films. Very good. The, the beginning. <laughs> Almost montage is extraordinary to behold. Very fast, very modern. Again, as with most Eureka releases, a very good book. And a very good film. So, number nine in the DVD series, newly restored to its original length. Um, this one's from 1928 and is 145 minutes. Can thoroughly recommend that one. Next up, number 22 in the Masters of Series Cinema series is The Prisoner of Shark Island, a film by John Ford. Um, this obviously is a talkie, it's from um, 1936, it's only 93 minutes long and it tells the story of Dr Samuel Mudd, the man who um, set the leg of William, uh, John Wilkes Booth, the man who shot Lincoln. Uh, it's, it's a very good film, I think it's John Carradine's in it somewhere, and this is where you get the the uh, expression "Your name is Mud." Um, he was unaware of who who his patient was, um, but even so, was sent to Shark Island for many years for a crime that he didn't really commit. Uh, a very good non-Western film from John Ford. Original poster there. Lovely. And again. A very good booklet. Talking 
tortured by a nation for his act of mercy. And I don't think his name was uh, cleared until uh, Jimmy Carter became president. Um, Jimmy Carter being a southern president. That's number 22, Prisoner of Shark Island. And it's back to the silent cinema with the Masters of Cinema series number 24, F.W. Murnau's Faust. <laughs> Look at that artwork, it's like um, a wood carving. A German folk tale. This is, this is the 80th anniversary to this special. It's 110 minutes long and it was made in 1926. See two discs. Oh, that one's a bit wobbly. There's a a selection of different posters there for the film. This is a classic Murno film. One well worth watching. Quite heavy going, but well worth the time invested in watching it. Another great release from Eureka. And number 25 is a film by Carl Dreyer, Vampire or Vampire. I don't know how you pronounce it. I would pronounce it Vampire myself, but that's probably wrong. This is from 1932. It is a sound film, but it almost plays like a silent film. It is one creepy ass film. Some excellent imagery throughout there. Uh, it's, it's almost like being in a dream watching this film. A lovely thicker booklet this time. And there, there is the, the classic image from that man with a scythe. For some reason, ri where he's ringing the bell to go across the river, it's just one of the creepiest images in cinema. A brilliant book, full of, as you can see, pictures and writing. I wonder if there is a picture of... Yeah, that, that, that image there is one of the most iconic in si early cinema, I think. A haunting film. Another one well worth giving some of your time to. It's only 72 minutes, but well worth it. That's weird. That's number 25. And my last DVD Masters of Cinema series is a box set, the complete Fritz Lang Mabuza box set. This takes in numbers 89 to 91. There they are. It's a cracking box set this is. This goes right from silent cinema to almost his last film. So, it goes 1922, 33 and 1960. Dr. Mabusa de Spieler, which is Dr. Mabusa the Gambler. It's a two disc edition, and this is actually two films really. A brilliant, brilliant box set. Each entry has its own booklet. 
to brilliantly photograph these things. The running time for this film is 270 minutes, so quite a long film. Very good. Next one up, Das Testament der Dr. Mabuza. The Testament of Dr. Mabuza. Look at that artwork. Incredible. And this one is from 1933, is 116 minutes, so a bit more manageable. And this is fantastic. Booklet contains or has the, the original poster artwork. Fritz Lang's Meister work. That is fantastic. Very good film. More accessible than the silent film. Not that the silent film is bad, it's just quite long. As you can see, plenty of writing about that. And then the Thousand Organ Des Dr. Mabuza, which is the Thousand Eyes of Dr. Mabuza. It's got Goldfinger himself in it, Kurt Frobe. This one's from 1960 and it is 99 minutes long. Again, that features the original poster artwork which is fantastic. This is a very good film. I think this was his second to last film but I could be completely wrong on that. There you have it, the Fritz Lang Dr. Mabuza box set. And that's it for the DVDs. So that was all my DVDs and the Masters of Cinema collection. And on to Blu-rays again. These are numbered, so I don't have to worry about which order they go in. And this is number nine, Fritz Lang's M. This is a fantastic film produced at the beginning of the sound era. And as with Alfred Hitchcock, Fritz Lang had already mastered using sound in cinema to devastating effect. A really, really good film. Well worth watching. Peter Laurie plays M, the murderer. Nice booklet with this. And what I like about the masses, they always tell you the correct aspect ratio to watch it in. Brilliant. If you've not seen that one, check it out. Very, very good film. Ooh, shiny gold steel book of Metropolis. Now, this is the longer cut, because at some point a 16 mil print was found in Argentina, I think and it was restored. Um, unfortunately due to the, the damage from the 16 mil print you can tell when it's been integrated into the film we've tried to clean up but it's so badly damaged but it does add to the to the film. Another brilliant but not just a, a reprint of the one from the DVD again notes on viewing and also 
it was um, win a gold bar. Unfortunately, I wasn't a lucky person who won the gold bar. This, I think this one also comes with. The Giorgio Moroder uh, cut from the 80s. Um. Pretty sure it does, sorry about that. Um. Mm. But look at that fantastic steel book. And up to 1972, I think. Yep, 90 minutes. This is Douglas Trumbull's Silent Running. Uh, he's the, the man responsible for the special effects in 2001. Very good sort of eco sci fi movie. If you've not seen it, again, thoroughly recommend this. Uh, just, just a great film. well worth a watch. And from 1932 a film that was banned in Britain for being against nature. Uh, Island of the Lost Souls. Again, a steel book, look at that. Dual format. Another booklet. Very good. This is a very good, very good film. Charles Lawton as Dr. Moreau. And some very good makeups that I don't think you actually see in the film, or if you do, they're very fleeting. Um, probably the best version of the uh, Dr. Moreau story out. Are we not men? Brilliant. And then from 1934, 102 minutes, Cecil B. DeMille's Cleopatra. Uh, typical DeMille, totally over the top and outrageous. Features the lovely Cordette Cl Colbert as Cleopatra. Just a sumptuous, good looking movie. And then we have from 1924, 282 minutes, again it's two films rather than one, is Fritz Lang's Die Nibelungen. Now, if Metropolis was the granddaddy of sci fi, and Spion was the granddaddy of spy films. This is a granddaddy of fantasy. This is silent cinemas, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. Right. This is an incredibly visual, uh, just exceptional film. They built this huge dragon for just one scene, and this thing weighed tons. It was made out. Absolute, there it is. It's just an uh, awe inspiring film. Uh, that's one of the most famous stills from the film. Just an incredible movie. Try and get to see that. <laughs> from 1915 in the USA at 194 minutes. Is D.W. Griffith's 
Birth of a Nation. A very controversial film at the time and now probably. Um, I've watched it a couple of times. It's not a film I particularly like. Um, I don't think anyone could say they particularly like it. There are elements in it that are very good and also elements that even in their day were quite shocking and upsetting. But as a piece of cinema history you need to watch it at least once or at least try and give it a go. It's not for everyone. And then from 1922 at 95 minutes, I think this is the most complete version out. Murnau's Nosferatu. Still the creepiest looking vampire ever. Uh, magnificent film. Very. Uh, look at that. First time I saw a clip of that where he comes out of the, the ship, it was like, what the hell was this film? I was only a youngster at the time. And it's so, so creepy. Um, unofficial film version of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, it was nearly completely destroyed on uh, orders of his widow, but luckily they kept the print. And Max Shrek is just the scariest looking vampire everywhere. Twilight, you can keep it. This is the real vampires. Another German film from 1920 at 77 minutes. This is Das Cabinet Das Dr. Caligari or Dr. Caligari's Cabinet. Um, a very odd film. Most of the sets are painted. Um, German Expressionism. I think you can put your own interpretation on a lot of the film. To me, the main body of the film is his fantasy, I think. Because uh, it's bookended where it's actually taking place in real settings. But another one that's well worth checking out. Another silent, this one from 1924, 149 minutes, and this is Douglas Fairbank, who also produced it, directed by Raoul Walsh, and it's The Thief of Baghdad, an Arabian Nights fantasy. This is absolutely stunning. Uh, the acting style is obviously not for everyone, they were very sort of hells a popping. But this film is just incredible. The amount of money they must have spent on sets, and I think at the time this was the most expensive silent film. But you have to see it, it is fantastic. Brilliant sets and special effects for their day hold up really well. And Douglas Fairbanks, well, he's a true star. A French film from 1932, filmed by Raymond Bernard at 115 minutes. It's a World War One classic, Wooden Crosses. Uh, a very episodic film, a bit like All Quiet on the Western Front, and makes a very good companion. This is actually done by the French. Um, it's not a film I'd heard of before until this was released. And it, it is an incredible piece of filmmaking. And there is a bit, sort of part way through, maybe halfway through, where they're in the trenches and they're being shelled. And it is absolutely stunning. For an early sound film, it, just, it almost gives you a, a hint of what it must have been like to be continuously shelled. Very, very good film. Cracking artwork as well. And also, next up, 1934, another film by Raymond Bernard, is Les Miserables, The Wretched. This, I think, is in three parts, this film. It's altogether, it's 288 minutes long. 
and this is most definitely the best cinema version of Victor Hugo's epic tale. You cannot get better than this. It is brilliant. You just, it's never been better. Uh, classic film and you don't have to put up with any of the horrible songs. Up to 1967 now, 111 minutes, and this is King Who's Dragon Inn. A very good martial arts movie. This is uh, more of the fantasy type martial arts where they go, they can actually they jump up into the air and sort of stay up there for a few seconds fighting and and can jump great distances and things like that uh, a very good film and well worth checking out which was followed up in 1970 at 180 minutes somewhat slightly longer King Hughes A Touch of Zen which is very very good the bamboo fight scene from Hidden Tiger Crouching Dragon, if I've got that the right way around, uh, was inspired from a, a, a scene in this film where they fight in a, a bamboo forest. This, like Dragon Inn, same sort of martial arts, very good, a lot longer film. And it's just fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant film. At the end, it does go all a bit zen, and you're thinking, what the hell? But, a very good film. And from 1983, 130 minutes, Nicholas Rogue's lost masterpiece, Eureka. This was a film that was never given any love on its release. Um, it sort of came and went, disappeared, and that was it. And look at the cast. You've got Gene Hackman, the late Rutger Hauer, Teresa Russell and Mickey Rourke. It's sort of based on a true story, I think. Um, and like most Nick Rogue films, you need to watch it two or three times to really get everything out of it. But a very good film. I remember seeing it on BBC Two once, and then it's probably never... Joe Pesci as well. It's never been on telly again and up until Eureka released this I don't think you could get it for the home market at all back to World War One with 1958 uh, sorry 1957 88 minutes Stanley Kubrick's most emotive film I think and probably one of his best Paths of Glory Kirk Douglas is fantastic in this film and the ending with the, uh, the German girl sing, singing at the uh, inn. If that doesn't bring a lump to your throat, then I don't know what would. Fantastic film. Brilliant. And alas, but by no means least, another King Who film. This one is at 191 minutes. It's a recent restoration of Legend of the Mountain. This is a beautiful looking film, but it's very, very slow. I've not watched all of it yet. It's uh, sort of a Chinese ghost story. I don't think there's a great deal of martial arts in it. Um, a fantastic restoration and it just looks absolutely stunning. I will finish it one day and I bet the only one has got a slip cover which is brilliant and that is my Eureka collection Masters of Cinema series I hope you enjoyed the video and oops thank you for watching <laughs>